welcome back to the session in R programming. Let us continue with the new concept of matrix in R programming. You may be seeing this screen a little different from the previous ones because we had used R Studio and currently I am using R GUI just to show you how different the screens look like. However, the console is the same that you see here in this window. You can save your workspace in a particular directory. You can create a new script and you can start typing it into this R console. So today, let us look at the concept of matrix. You already know what is a vector. A vector is a one-dimensional array of data elements. Let me write it down here. A vector is a one-dimensional one-dimensional array of data elements. What is a matrix? A matrix is nothing but it's a two-dimensional array of data elements. The matrix consists of a series of rows and columns. Now we can represent that as a series of those rows and columns in our programming also. Let us now see a small example. I want to create a matrix called 1, 2, and then 3 and a 4. This is a small 2 by 2 matrix. And uh, let us write it in this format. The way you would write it is it would be matrix 1 to 4. And the number of rows that you want is 2. Okay. So just copy it here. And paste commands. If I press in enter, it will show you in this format. The default way in which the R program loads the matrix is by a column. So if you are typing in from 1 to 6, it would load 1, 2 in the first column, 3, 4 in the second column, and 5, 6 in the third column. It is the default column-wise loading by the R program. Okay. Now if you want this to be done, let's say in three columns one to six you can put it as number of columns you want as three and it will display in this format so one two three four and five six if you do not want the default of uh, loading pattern by column wise you can specify always that it can be loaded horizontally also by mentioning end row equals to 2 and you can say by row is true okay so it would then load uh, as per the rows 1 2 and then 3 and 4 there are certain ways in which our program intelligently loads up the data and one of them is called recycling okay and what does it mean by recycling you use the same data again and again, let's say you want to load the data from one is to four um, in two col in two rows and three columns. Okay, the way it does is you can say matrix and these uh, curly braces uh, one is to three, and then the number of the space here, number of rows is uh, two, and number of number of columns is uh, three. It will fill up in this fat pattern by filling up the, the column first and then the rows. So 1, 2, 3 and it will recycle the same data to fill it up and reach to the end of the particular matrix. Uh, but if you say 1 is to 4 and number of rows is 2 and number of uh, columns is 3 then in that case it will give you a warning message. Okay, so you are saying matrix. 1 is to 4, which is fill up from 1 to 4, and number of rows is 2, number of columns is uh, 3. It will give you an error because the length of the elements that you are using from 1 to 4 is not a sub multiple or multiple of the number of columns. Okay, so number of columns you have to check the, uh, the number of rows that you are using and the number of columns that you are using, and then match it with the elements, number of elements that you are. Uh, trying to fill here. So this is called as a recycling. So now that you have seen the concept of recycling, how our program 
recycle the data again and again to fill up to the exact number of columns let us look at another concept called R bind and C bind short for row bind and column bind so in this case if you say C bind uh, for me from 1 to 3 and again from 1 to 3 it will fill up the matrix as though it is filling up the columns the first column from 1 to 3 the second column from 1 to 3 Similarly, if you have an R bind, you start filling up from the rows from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, and 4. So it will paste these vectors together in a particular fashion, okay, in the column wise and the, the row wise also. However, there are some more uses for R bind and C bind. Let's say you have um, a matrix. Let me clear out this one. So you have a matrix um, which is assigned and you have to fill it from 1 to 6 the number of rows equals 2 and it should actually fill up in the in this format okay so if you type in M this is the way you get it two rows and it's and by row is equal to true which says 1 to 3 and 4 5 6 is the row wise if you want to add 7 8 and 9 as the third row you can use r bind and the way you use it is r bind m comma 7 to 9 okay. and it will start filling up like this with 7 and 8 and 9 let's say you want to use it um, in another fashion with column bind and you want to add 10 and 11 so you can say c bind for m with columns of 10 comma 11 okay. so it will give you in this format so next how do you name your rows and columns you may be remembering earlier that we had used something called the names function for vectors okay so here we have something called row names and uh, we also have something called the column names because in this case, if we have to name both rows and columns, we can use these uh, functions. So to the original matrix, that is M, let us apply this concept and see how it works out. So I would say row names is for this M is a vector of in double quotes row 1 and double quotes row 2, close the loop. Okay, now if I type M, it will say row 1 and row 2. Now, how do you name these columns then? It's easy, it's the same thing that you use column names for M would begin from the combination of these vectors, which is column 1, column 2, and column 3. Okay, so if I type in M, you would have the names of the columns also. There's another way of uh, creating a matrix with row names and column names. That is by using a combination of dim names and a list. So the way that you do it is, now let's say x equal to, or x, uh, you have a matrix, and you're creating it for 1 to 9. Okay. The number of rows that you want is 3 with a, Filling up pattern by row, so it should be true. Give it a comma, and then here we write uh, dim names equal to list, and type in the vector of the row names that you want to use. So row one, row two, row three. Okay. So close the brackets and a comma. Just check the syntax here. And then you type in the vector of column names by saying column 1, column 2, column 3. Okay. And then close it. If you type in x here, you'll get the same result. Okay. By using a combination of dim names and list. You can also type in the row names and the column names also. Okay, so let's say you want to combine multi-dimensional 
elements there is uh, something called a coercion that happens so we try and combine multi multi dimensional elements coercion takes place what is coercion it's nothing but um, a forceful loading of uh, the elements to form a matrix so let's see we have a series of uh, vectors and one vector is uh, numeric so you have one to six and number of columns is uh, three okay so you type in a and you get this result and then you have another one which has uh, a matrix of letters from a to um, you know, let's say f okay and then number of columns that you want is uh, three okay so if you type in b you get this result so the first one is numerics the second one is uh, characters if you want to bind these two by using column bind of uh, a comma b it converts everything into these kind of character variables if you want to work with multi-dimensional elements then what you need to do is use something called lists or data frames and those things we will discuss in a later session again okay, okay so how do you select uh, particular elements in the matrix because it's two dimensional right so the way you use it is uh, by identifying the row and then the column also in a typical vector with one dimension you would write the the place of the particular element in square brackets which you want to pick up but in a matrix you need to use uh, two uh, coordinates in fact to identify the particular element in the matrix let's say for example you have this particular matrix containing a random sample that I want to generate now uh, let's say from 1 to 12 and with number of rows equals to 3 okay so I want to generate about 12 uh, numbers from 1 to 12 randomly uh, and this populate it in three rows so I click enter I click on M so you have these random numbers that are generated so it's a random generation is a particular uh, way of generating a um, as, as the word says random numbers as part of statistical analysis now if you want to locate the coordinates of let's say the first row and then the second column okay the number five the way you do it is in square brackets you write the first row and then the second column and close the brackets so it will give you the number five similarly if you want to locate the third the fourth row and uh, the, uh, the third row and then the fourth column okay what would that number be it's 10 right well this is easy now what happens if you just type in M and in the square brackets you type in 6? Our program actually goes and counts the sixth, the element which is located at the sixth index. So it would do it column wise beginning from 6, 9, 11, 5, 4, 1. So it would give the, the value of 1. So 6 is index 1, 9 is index 2, 11 is index 3, 5 is index 4, 4 is index 5, and 1 is index 6. Okay. So it would count it in that particular uh, fashion. So now if you want to you know, subset a column and uh, subset a matrix basically by typing out all the rows, if you want to type out the, the second row completely, you would say M in square brackets, two comma and leave it out blank. So this would actually type in or print out the second row, nine, four, 12, and eight, okay? And the way you do it for column, of course, would be a little bit around where you have a comma, and then you mention, let's say, the fourth column which you want to be printed out as a result. So this would be 7, 8, and 10. So matrices is a very powerful aspect of our programming. Let's continue with factors in the next session. Don't forget to subscribe and like my video. Thank you very much.